All right, everybody, it has been years since I made the original how to use a mixing board tutorial video. I believe it may be the most popular video on Real Home Recording. Now, this is going to be a very quick overview of a mixing board. I'm, I'm going to make a better presentation, but I want to do a POV video to, to you know, kind of dispel the myths and the... Uh, I, I know that when I first looked at a mixing board all those years ago, decades ago, really, uh, I was intimidated by all these controls. I'm like, you know, and I had a bigger, well, was it bigger? Nah, but maybe about the same size as this mixing board. And, um, you know, it just seems like a lot of controls, but what I like about these newer boards is uh, it's color coded. Um, back in the day, that wasn't the case. And, um, you know, this one has built in reverb delay. Anyway, let me let me start by number one, showing you guys that first of all, there's, oh, thank you to Phoenix Pro for making this video possible. This video should have came out over two years ago. My apologies. Anyway, the mixing board is plugged in. I'm gonna hit the power switch right now. And there you go. It's cranking on. All right. So, first of all, you plug in microphone cables, if you don't know what that is. That is this cable right here. This is called an XLR cable. You plug this in like so. Um, so the, the way you figure this out... Sorry, I was interrupted by my dog. Anyway, you plug in, you look at the three prongs, and the dog is going to start crying if I don't give her a treat. Hold on. Okay. So XLR cable, three prong, balanced cable, offers professional quality audio because it is a very low noise signal. And if you look, so now this one, because it has, it also has an additional line input where you would put in your, uh, this is called a phone cable. Now this one actually is a balanced phone cable and you know that because of this extra bit of um, black right here. You see that? That's a, gr that's a ground. So that goes in the middle there because this is called a combination input connector but or just combination connector but you could but you also look at see how the, the there's those three holes surrounding where I just had the phone cable so you look at this and you say oh there's my three prongs and what you normally would do there is actually on on, on good mixing boards see that arrow right there that arrow will go at the top. So, like so. And then you do that for all the different XLR inputs. And there's eight of them on this. Okay, so that's the XLR. And, and remember, I'm only doing the first channel here because all eight of these channels are the exact same thing. The faders, which are these things, the XLR inputs, every single channel on the first eight they're the exact same thing so once you learn channel one you know the rest okay so next up underneath that i'm going to unplug the xlr cable this is an insert cable insert cables insert connections are beautiful because it allows us to use what's called outboard processing for each one of these channels not every mixing board has an insert the cheaper mixing boards don't have them. Uh, and, and just, you know, why, why not? I, I don't know. But bottom line is the insert allows us to have additional effects like equalization, compression. Um, if we have, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a reverb on an insert necessarily on an analog console or analog mixing board. By the way, if I use the word console, it, it's the same thing as mixing board. Okay, so next up, we have, now, you wouldn't know this unless you read the user manual, and I highly recommend using uh, reading user manuals. This is a 26 decibel attenuation button. So when you press that in, it will reduce the signal strength of your input by 26 decibels. My goodness, there are just barks, there's motorcycles. Anyway, 
this is why it's so hard to find. This is why I normally record at night. I should have recorded at night. Anyway, this is a high pass filter. Um, you know, in a live mixing situation, I would use it, but for recording, you know, you know, no offense to Phoenix Pro, but you know, this is a one of the more affordable mixing consoles out there. So I probably wouldn't use this. Um, you know, that, that's the same thing for like a Mackie board or anything like that. I might not even use it on one of the cheaper SSL mixing boards. Um, you know, the, the 100 hertz filter, if you forget the, le if you leave that in and you have like a kick drum or a bass guitar plugged in, uh, that, that's going to cause you a problem. So always double check that you don't have any of these pressed down because you don't want that happening on your bass channels. Um, okay. This is probably the most important control of them all for each channel. That is your gain knob. Different from the fader, by the way. And the dog wants to go outside, so hold on. Okay. So the gain is your microphone or line input preamplifier gain. It's called preamp because it's before the amplifier of your speaker system or the amplifier of your headphones. We'll get to the headphones soon. Anyway, the gain is what controls our overall volume. And on some mixing boards, you actually have meters with every channel. This one, unfortunately, doesn't have that. Um, but if you look down here, there's a clip button. And if your input is too loud, this button will light up. All right. So anyway, you adjust this and... If you have every other channel muted and you have your, this is your main sliders for the entire console. So what you want to do is bring these up to zero. That's a little hard to do on camera. Uh, eh, they're about even. Good enough for rock and roll as the old saying goes. I'll, I'll, I'll make it even better. How about that? There we go. All right. So you have those up. When you have something plugged in, and I probably should have, I'll, I'll do that on the better video. When you have something plugged in and your fader on your channel is up to zero, I usually like to go to zero. Um, some mixing boards are marked with U for unity gain, uh, which basically just means that there is no, the fader is not affecting the gain, uh, the input gain at all at the zero point, and you're only affecting it with the gain up here okay so this this mixing board provides up to 60 decibels of input gain it's marked by that 60 when you're using a line input um, it goes to this smaller number here uh, where it's either plus 10 or or negative 34 I don't know why it operates that way I'm gonna have to try that out I've never tried um, using line inputs on this board yet but anyway Next down the line, and again, we're just staying with channel one. Ignore all these other channels. So here's our equalizer. Now, this is a very basic EQ. It's similar to the one that you have if you uh, drive a car or you've been in a car. They have uh, the low end. I'm sorry. I'll just call this the treble, the mid, and the either lows or bass. So, you know, you can use those terms interchangeably. Sorry for hitting the camera right there. But um, yeah, so you can adjust this. I usually like to have these zeroed out anytime I put something on. And then I will... <sighs> on this board, for live sound, obviously I would use the EQ. Um, I, I forget what the frequencies are for this particular board. It's in the user manual. And for some reason, the user manual was mixing from the box when I just took it out of there. So uh, anyway... These are important for getting your overall tone for each input. Very important for live sound. And then, uh, yeah. On to the auxiliary input. I'm sorry, the auxiliary outputs. Now, if you look at the labels here, it says 1MON, which stands for monitor. But really, that could be for anything. It's just a, uh, I'm assuming this is a balanced line output. It may be unbalanced. I'm not sure but let's just assume it's balanced. And anyway, this is a down the line 
essentially a volume control after the gain. After the gain. And I, I believe also the, the fader does not have anything to do with this. Now, each console is different. And there's also options on some mixing boards where you can press it, where it's called um, pre-fader or after-fader. So you got, got to make sure that you press that correct button. I really wish I had a bigger mixing board to show off for you guys, but this is what I have to show. And um, honestly, this is within you know a home studio kind of mixing board. So anyway, auxiliary output. This is cool because you um, after the equalizer, you can, you can actually send this into, uh, similar to the insert, you can send this to either, let's say, like a headphone distribution amplifier. If you're recording somebody, um, you would send it to them, and then you can actually get, for, for each one of these levels, let's say, let's say all these were taken up. Let's say this was a drum kit, and a drummer's like, hey, man, I want to hear more kick drum in my headphones. Well, I don't want that affecting what I'm hearing or what I'm recording. So I would say, okay, well, I'm going to give you more kick drum, Mr. Mr. Uh, drummer. So I'll, I'll increase the auxiliary volume to the monitors, uh, the, the line output. And uh, that's cool, right? So anyway, the next one, this is also another auxiliary output. But this one actually goes to, to the effects unit which is built into this mixing board. Now, if you look at this really closely, it says uh, all these different effects. So we have vocal reverb, 